The Seventh-day Adventist Church, in consultation with the Health Ministries and Public Affairs Emergency Liberty Department of the General of the GC, is convinced that the Sunday programs are the Sunday law programs that are generally being carried out are important for the safety and health of our members and a larger community. Now, they may not say Sunday law, but they will they probably, they probably say the Sabbath law. Hello, friends. Welcome to another video. This is Open Your TV. We got to talk about it. Dr. Vine, um, Conrad Vine. If it is your first time, hit that subscribe button below and that like button and that notification bell so you can be alert when I post a new video. I'm not going to take too much time. Let's get right into the video right now. Why am I talking about this again tonight? Because as I said last night, we are facing new totalitarian demands affecting all of humanity. The WHO is actively seeking by the international health regulations the authority to declare actual or potential pandemics, to issue mandates that override and, and um, override all civil and human rights, and to mandate vaccines globally. That's what they're openly and actively seeking for. And once they get it once, they'll never get, give up that authority. We are entering a techno dictatorship, a dictatorship of technocrats. The Let me say this one thing real quick. Um, this is so true. If they can put a mandate and people follow, it's going to be very easy to just say, well, this is because of that. And they can make any excuse. And because people will follow at, at follow the first time, and then there is a more of a tendency to follow the second, third, until you no longer have your own conscience. Let's keep on moving. Climate change industry is also seeking climate change lockdowns to be held on Sundays to preserve our common planetary home. Disease X, Mpox, uh, avian flu mandates and vaccines, these are all in our future. These are all being openly discussed by our political elites. And it won't be a surprise to you that the papacy actively supports the climate change lockdowns and the vaccination lockdowns. They support all of those lockdowns, not because they're particularly interested in your well-being, but because these initiatives cement a globalized technocratic dictatorship over all of humanity. They allow societies to accept the fact that you can override the convictions of the Holy Spirit on the consciences of individuals. Once we accept once, as in the last four years, that you can override your conscience, then it's easier for people to accept that in the next crisis. That's exactly what I just said. And <laughs> I'm telling you, once you say yes to something, even your conscience is saying no, but you, you give your conscience to somebody else but except for God, then yeah, the next thing they're gonna tell you, you're gonna be like, you know what? I said yes the first time. Why not say it the second time? And I'll, I'll, on to the point where you're gonna realize, oh, this is just a normal thing, when actually it's not a normal thing. Let's keep on moving. The papacy supports these initiatives because they help to usher in the final crisis of conscience and false worship that will precede the second coming. Now. now let me say this one real quick. This is where the Seventh-day Adventist comes in. Um, to most people, they always say, you know what, Seventh-day Adventism is a cult. And then what is a cult? They're a cult, 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 cult. But you know very interesting? The very message we've been preaching about, there will be a Sunday law in the future. There will be a time when they will force the people to worship on a particular day or Sunday, most people will say that's not going to happen. People like, well, I'm not going to mention names, but the people that are on YouTube making videos saying, Seven Avenues are saying all of these things, this cannot happen. It is not true. We saw that. Uh, four years ago, 
people no longer had a conscience. Most people had to follow the rules or you get fired. Follow the rules or you don't get medical help. Follow the rules or you don't, you don't get, you don't, you're not able to buy or sell. Chapter 13 of Revelation. We've been preaching on the book of Revelation for so long. People are still blinded that they think this is not coming. But keep watching. It will surely come to pass one day. Now, when it comes to the climate change issue, the GC Adcom did issue a statement in December 95 called the, the, the Dangers of Climate Change. It's an official statement. I wish they wouldn't issue these official statements because they don't age very well. Um, this is what they voted. It says the SDA Church officially requested all world governments to, quote, take steps necessary to avert the danger. Quote, by fulfilling the agreement reached in Rio de Janeiro, the 1992 Convention on Climate Change, to stabilize carbon dioxide emissions by the year 2000 at 1990 levels, and by establishing plans for further reductions in carbon dioxide emissions after the year 2000. That last sentence is an open check to the world governments to do what they want for climate change, as far as our church is concerned. We have already signed up to whatever climate change initiatives are going to come our way. Therefore, it is not surprising that if you just change the word vaccination for climate change, that statement could be issued in the future, where it says the General Conference is convinced that not vaccination but climate change programs that are being carried out are important for the safety and health of our members and larger community. Therefore, claims of religious liberty are not used appropriately in objecting to government mandates or employer programs designed to protect the health and safety of their communities. Let me say, let me add one more thing to your statement, Dr. Vine. I'm going to reread this for everybody to understand exactly what's going on right now. The Seventh day Adventist Church, in consultation with the Health Ministries and Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department, of the general of the GC is convinced that the Sunday programs or the Sunday law programs that are generally being carried out are important for the safety and health of our members and a larger community. Now they may not say Sunday law, but they will they probably, they probably say the Sabbath law. Therefore, claims of religious liberty are not a use appropriately in objection to government mandates or employer programs designed to protect the health and safety of their communities. Let me tell you, this can go anywhere. Actually, as a matter of fact, some of you who have been watching prophecies can see that Pope Francis, he doesn't mention Sunday, he mentioned the Sabbath. What Sabbath are we talking about? The Seventh day Sabbath or the Vatican Sabbath? which is Sunday. In case you guys didn't know, you're going to find out. He mentioned the Sabbath. It doesn't say Sunday. He mentioned the Sabbath. So that right here, climate change, can be changed to Sabbath. Anyhow, what are you going to do? Well, once you've signed up an open-ended check to the world governments to implement whatever they want to do to restrict climate change, this is not a far, it's not beyond imagination, beyond reason to expect this kind of statement to be issued once again. And once again, our conscience is to be trampled upon. So, as I look at, we look at the, 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 of what has happened in the last four years, as I travel around the world, I see that we are facing a potential split along two lines in our church. It's, how it's come to the United Methodists, it's come to the Lutherans, it's come to the Presbyterians, it's come to the Episcopalians, and it's coming our way as well. I'm going to stop it right here because I think what he's going to talk about, I don't know, it might take a long time, but let me just stop right here. Um, I want you guys to think about this. Whatever is happening into the other Christian church, I'm, talk, I'm talking primarily now to the Seventh-day Adventist. Don't think you are protected from the attacks of the devil. The devil already has power over most of the churches because you know why? They refuse to 
have the Sula Scriptura, Sula Scriptura or only Scripture. Therefore, when you see the United Methodist Church being split, the Baptist Church, like Southern Baptists, are now different than the, um, I would say, Northern Baptist churches. Most of the churches that are in the South, I should say, are mostly in opposition to the alphabet community um, abomination or to the um, women's ordination abomination to no abomination, women having lead over men in the church type um, and they they don't they don't like that idea now I always said this I believe women can be pastors they can preach and do all that kind of stuff but the position of leadership God has given that to the men period from what I understand from the Bible that's about it now women can do anything in church they can preach they can sing they can teach uh, the children they can teach Sabbath school whatever but the position of the leadership God has given that to the men period which means when those churches are trying to promote women over men in the churches now granted if the men don't want to do the work, by no means let the women do it. But when you're putting women in a position that men want to do, that is totally contrary to God's word. Let me add this one caveat. The United Methodist Church got split because of LGBT um, propaganda or abomination. Baptist Church all split, I think, because of women's ordination and things of that nature. Don't think all seven day Avenues are immune to that. One day it might happen, we are gonna split. It can happen. This is not far fetched. You can actually see things already happening and put in place. Don't think we're gonna be immune. Now, Jesus did say, let the wheat and the tail grow together until the harvest. Does that mean we should leave the church? I don't know. But what I do know is there will be a time when you're gonna there's gonna be churches promoting unbiblical teachings versus those promoting biblical teachings. I'm gonna stop it right here. And I'm gonna leave it like as that. Guys, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button and that notification bell on your way out. If you like the video, you will do that. Remember, what Dr. Vine just said is not far fetched. It can and possibly will happen in the future. But it was again the Overgod TV. Hope you see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.